Some of them had to just instantly dismiss it, right? They were cynical. They, they wanted to get on with their business. So they decided that it was just those, those Galilean fishermen who were, who, who were, who were, too, who, they were drinking, right? Turns out somebody had to interpret for them, had to explain what was going on. Thus, the very first sermon of the whole Christian church ever was preached. And I think it's so cool that the very first part of the very first sermon includes some humor, right? An explanation as to, well, of course they can't be drunk because, hey, it's only nine o'clock in the morning. I am so glad Pentecost didn't happen at 7 p.m. <laughs> Peter then goes on to talk about what this event really was. It was a pouring out of the Holy Spirit. It, it was God keeping this ancient promise that he had made through the prophet Joel that he would pour out his Spirit upon all people, men, women, young, old, slaves, free. It was for everybody. He would finally bridge that gap that existed so deeply between God and his people. Enemies would become friends. In short, it was all about Jesus. And so this miracle of Pentecost has become this beautiful reminder that sometimes we got to bring the bread. Sometimes we, we've got to tell the story. For as motivated as we are to go out into the world and to be salt and light and to do good things, we're reminded that we also have to tell the good story. The story of Jesus. Lutherans, we really like that phrase that's attributed to St. Francis of Assisi. Preach the good news all the time. Use words when necessary. To me, that's a reminder that sometimes it is necessary to tell our story. The way th the Apostle Peter says in his first letter, he says, always be prepared to give a defense for the hope that lies within you. God bless him. Dale Click. Do you remember Pastor Dale Click? He was a member of this church. He went to heaven last year at the age of 94. He was an awesome guy. He was stubborn. He spoke with a growl. His preaching gig? He, he refused, by the way, to retire. And so at the age of 94, he was by far the oldest active rostered minister in the Lutheran church. And so that means he had to have a, 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 a pastoral assignment. Do you know where his assignment was? It was on cruise ships. <laughs> now, I remember them in seminary telling me about the mission field, right? About going down to, to the depths of Africa or, or some, some uh, you know, out, out, outlandish place somewhere in, in, in Asia. They never told me about cruise ships. <laughs> right? I always told Pastor Quick, I said, Pastor Quick, I want to be like you when I grow up. <laughs> but he had a mantra, a saying that he would always say to me, and this is what it sounded like. The first job of the church is evangelism. That's pretty good, right? <laughs> if you don't know him, he sounds exactly like that. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> but that's what he would say. And according to our lesson today, as we hear the very first sermon that was ever preached in the Christian church, we realize that Pastor Quick was right. It is our first job. We are called to tell the story. 
of the hope that lies within us. It's what identifies us as Christians. That beautiful story, that important story of how Jesus came into this world. God became flesh and we rejected him. And our sins put him on a cross. But that's not the end of the story. No, God in his grace persisted and in his grace he raised Jesus. That we could put our faith in him just as the choir sang. Because God so loved the world that he gave his only son that all who would put their faith in him would have eternal life. That's the story that Peter told that day. On that day, Peter was bringing the bread. And it moved people. Did you notice that? The pilgrims that were there, having traveled thousands of miles to go and worship at the temple, heard the story that Peter told, and they were moved. They had just taken a big, long journey but now in that moment, they, take, they took an even longer journey. The journey from the head to the heart. First, they asked the head question. They said, what does this mean? But when they heard the story, they were moved to ask the heart question. You know what that question is? It's, what shall we do? What shall we do? And in that moment, in the all of the world, there was no better qualified person to give that answer than Peter. Why? Because he had just been through what they were asking. Do you remember Peter's story? Peter was the one who denied his Lord three times. It must have struck Peter so low. He, he must have wanted to die. He must have felt less than zero if that's possible. He must have asked himself the question, what shall I do? And that is when Jesus came to him and said, Peter, do you love me? And Peter said, Lord, you know I do. And he was forgiven. This is the answer that Peter gave the people that day who asked the question, what shall I do? It's, 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 it's a kind of a hard one to read. It just sounds so rote. But I, I, think, I think it must have been powerful to hear based on Peter's own experience. Peter says, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven, and so that you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Repent. It means to turn around, to return. Peter knew in that moment. I wonder if he just, I wonder if when they said that, he, he stopped to think about it. And he reflected on his own experience. And then it came to him. He knew that if God could forgive him, he could forgive anyone. And so, so Peter said, come home. Peter brought the bread. Peter told the story. You know why he did? Because sometimes you love something so much that you want to tell everybody. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for your gift of grace, your Son, Jesus Christ, May we put our faith in Him. May we trust in Him. May we partake of the bread of life. And Lord, by all means, may we share it. 
Amen.